Well, we'll get started. Uh, my name is Eric Brown, and I'm president of Brown Engineering and Construction Services. And uh, I'd like to start by just thanking you for allowing us the opportunity to present the latest news on this project, the basin that's being built in Shawnee Park. Um, understanding that your time is valuable, uh, we've prepared a presentation that's focused on the key activities that will occur when we start construction in January of 2017 and throughout the year. Before uh, we actually start the presentation, um, I'd like for us to agree on a couple of rules. One, you have some question cards. And uh, when you have a question, uh, please record those cards. If you see on the agenda, you should see on the agenda that we've allowed time towards the end of the meeting to be able to address those questions. If your question can't wait, feel free to raise your hand or interject and uh, we will respond to it. Understand though, as a facilitator, I do reserve the right to parking lot your question, which means if it's gonna to take too long to respond to it or we just don't have enough information tonight to respond to it, we will record your name, we will record your address and your question and then we'll coordinate some time with you to uh, uh, address that issue more at, at a more appropriate time. All your respo any responses that we have tonight on questions or anything that we parking lot will be available online for your review. So all, all answers to all questions will be, be available for the public to, to review. Uh, if you need to leave, the second thing, if you need to leave before the meeting is over, make sure you've signed in and, given, and, and provided the uh, appropriate information on that sign-in sheet so that we can, we'll be able to know, one, who was here tonight, but if we need to reach you, we have all the information necessary to do that. All right? Now, there are, there are a few key people involved in this project that I think I'd like to, that I would like to recognize. These individuals play a significant role in the design, construction, and community engagement for this project. So if you would raise your hand um, when your name is called, I'd appreciate that. Uh, first, we have John Lockley. John is the MSD Director of Engineering. Greg Powell, MSD Director of uh, Manager of Engineering and Construction. Your progressive design build team. This is the group that will build the project. Starting with Eric Meister, he's the project executive, Ullum and Schutte Construction, and Ken Sponigle, he's principal designer, Burgess and Nipel. We are proud to share that this project funds several improvements to the Shawnee Park, which will be designed and built by your Louisville Metro Parks. Today, you'll hear more about these uh, features. Representing Louisville Metro Parks is Director Marty Storch. All right, and someone else that you need to know, it's probably the most important person in the room, is Brandon Flaherty. Uh, he is the MSD project manager. He has the everyday honor, is Brandon here? Raise it up, Brandon, so everybody can see who you are. He has the everyday honor of being responsible to make sure everything on this project goes right. So he has a lot of responsibility on his shoulders. You've met Kristen Brown. Uh, she's a communications specialist for my firm, Brown. As a member of your progressive design team, she and I serve as community liaison for this project. Our job is to assure that we minimize the impact of, of this construction on your life and uh, keep you informed as, as uh, construction progresses. With that, let's start the presentation. All right. We've made significant progress in the design of the basin and its associated facilities. Across the country, many lessons have been learned about building these facilities and these kinds of projects in our communities. Our progressive design team, mindful of many of these lessons learned, have developed a facility that is not only state of the science, but it's easy on the eyes. And you'll know what I mean by that when um, Ken comes here in a minute. So with that, I'd like to ask Ken to come up and share with you the latest news on the design. Thanks, Eric. Uh, as Eric had said, uh, my name is Ken Spinago with Burgess and Naipo. 
I'm the design project manager for the project, uh, working directly with Eric Meister as part of the progressive design build team. So what I wanted to do is take you through uh, some of the design components as we have them now and do a little bit of, of discussion about what's different than what, we, what was the design before. So in this slide, we've labeled where the basin goes. And so this uh, blue rectangle is, depicts where the basin's going to be, but that basin is completely below grade. So there's about 15 feet of soil on top of it. So when the construction is done with this basin, the great lawn is going to be restored to exactly as it, as it was before construction. So this basin is buried, and just as a reference, the Duffy flagpole is here. A lot of the references will be from the Duffy flagpole to kind of give you some perspective on what you might see or what, more importantly, you don't see in the park as we uh, do the construction of the project. So the basin itself, it's a 20 million gallon capacity basin, and this is to store overflows so that in a big storm situation, those overflows don't go to the river. So this basin will store that overflow and, until the treatment plant can handle that, and then it'll be pumped up to the treatment plant. The basin itself is about 480 feet in the long direction, and this, and this is the north-south direction, and then 207 and a half feet in the other direction. It's about 55 feet deep, uh, on average for the basin. Uh, and the, the soil coverage, uh, I said 15 feet, it, it averages 12 and a half, but it's anywhere from probably 11 and a half to 15 feet of soil coverage on top of that basin. So this is, this is a depiction of, of a, a generality of what the operations building was going to look like uh, previously. And this was before some of the, uh, the discussions I know that have been had about the project. Uh, yep. So you know the operations building, um, the basin will be a big concrete structure underground. So that you know the operations building, uh, the basin will be a concrete structure underground and connected to that structure, um, very adjacent to it is going to be a separate, uh, another facility. And that is a facility where MSD and their staff actually go in order to operate the basin. So it's not a separate facility, it's integrated with the basin, um, primarily underground. So Thank you. Eric is my engineer translator. <laughs> so one of the things we want to point out about this is this has been revamped. This is not what the current design is for, a, for any type of an operations building in the park. We have uh, heard some of the comments and we have redone this. So what it's going to look like now, and this, this is from uh, the area close to Southwestern Parkway. Uh, the only thing you're going to see back here is there are some retaining walls with some fencing along it and a little access drive here for MSD vehicles to be able to pull up into the operations building. And you see just one face of the operations building. Everything else of that building is also buried below grade. So you won't see any type of uh, MSD operations building or maintenance facility of any type above grade. It will just be that one face of a wall. And in a little bit of a closer uh, view of it. Here's that wall. Way back behind here is where the Duffy flagpole is as a, as a kind of a reference point. So if you were standing at the flagpole looking back, all you would see is this piece of wall right here, which, which uh, is just a safety wall so that people can't fall over into, the, into that area. Uh, so that is really from the, from the Great Lawn area. That is the only thing you would see of this entire operations facility. Also, uh, this is, again, a conceptual drawing, but the expectation is that there'll be additional landscaping around the, um, the, the, hand, the, the rails that are coming out. So again, that's not an exact depiction, depiction uh, but it's enough to, so us to be able to see the facility, right? But there will be additional landscaping around that. So if you're standing on Southwestern, looking back, you won't see all of that concrete structure. There'll be trees and other landscaping in that area. Says my translator. <laughs> so along with this, as Eric had mentioned, uh, a big part of this project and maybe one of the more important pieces of it is there are new amenities in the park which actually will make your park uh, a better uh, facility for you. All right. As, share, as Ken has shared, um, the project, this project is funding many improvements to the park. While these improvements are still in very early concept, in a very early concept phase in development, 
they will introduce some new park features as well as renovating some old ones. So Ken and then Marty will will take a moment to uh, share with you the details about these improvements and uh, and what our plans are for bringing these features to the park. Gotcha. So what this plan is showing, uh, and just as a reference, Duffy Flagpole is right in this area, right in the middle of the Great Lawn. Uh, what this is showing is some of the paving that's going to be done as part of the project. Uh, as part of the construction, this piece of the loop road will be fairly torn up, so that's going to be completely replaced. So that will be all new pavement uh, by the time construction is done. The blue area, which is the rest of the loop road, is going to get a new overlay of pavement on it. And while it's not in bad shape now, as part of this proje project, we are going to do an overlay for that road so that it is in good shape for years to come. And we've got a little bit of pavement down in this area of this operations building. This is the building I said that's really buried. It's right here. There's a little bit of pavement right there for access for MSD vehicles. So there is a little bit of pavement down in this area that's going to be done as part of the project. So that's the, uh, the pavement that will be done for the roads. And then uh, there's an existing gravel lot here right at the, uh, the, sp the spray playground. That's also going to be paved. It's gravel right now, so that'll be paved as part of the project as well. This is a photo of the existing open air pavilion that's in the park. And the reason we bring this to your attention is there's going to be a new pavilion that will be constructed as part of uh, the project, it, it will have restrooms with it, it'll be open air, much like this is open air, but we're still working on some of the design concepts and working with Marty at Metro Parks to, to make sure that the design is in keeping with what it should be at this park. So there's, there's, there's still design work being done, but we just wanted to show you just kind of a concept from what's already at the park for, for what an open pavilion may look like. We're still working through some of those details, but that is a new facility. Uh, that's able to be used by the park patrons. And this is the existing flood pump station. Uh, as you can see, this building, it's out there in the park. It's uh, uh, very engineer-like, I would call it. There's no windows, there's really no style to it. It's, it's just a, a building for the existing pump station that's there. We are going to do uh, some things to that building to upgrade the facade, make it more in keeping with what y you might want to see in the park. So there, and there, there may be more landscaping around it as well and maybe some screening to help hide it a little bit to, to maybe blend it more in with the, uh, the park around it. So there is gonna be work done to that. And once again, working with Marty with Metro Parks, we'll be working on what's the style, what are those upgrades going to be to make sure that uh, as a design and construction team, we do a good job of really giving something that uh, that your neighborhood really would want to have in the park. And with that, Marty. I want to thank uh, Eric for the promotion that I got this evening. Uh, it'll be reflected on my next check. Uh, oh, you can't do that for yourself. I'm sorry. Uh, thank you all for uh, being here this evening. And I want to thank MSD. Olmstead Conservancy and the, and the whole Parks and Recreation team and Councilman for being involved in this process. It's been a long time in, in getting to this point. Um, one of the things I'd like to add that between the improvements that we're going to make along with the improvements, the in-kind, it's about two and a half million dollars in total renovations to the park. So with that, oh, I went the wrong direction. Was what? Okay. IT department is under me as well, just so you know. <laughs> well, I'm not going to mess this thing up again. Which one? You good? Just start there. Those are your ball house. Those are your three parts. Okay. Yeah. All right. So in the, the, the three main things that we looked at, actually there were four. What, what Parks and Recreation, the Mayor's Office, we were looking at, what, what we kind of looked at is the broken windows that ex have existed for a long time in Shawnee Park. The Lily Pond, uh, the Ball House, the Bath House, whatever you want to call it, the Athletic Courts, which is, also includes the baseball, 
and the original dirt bow courts, which are right below Shawnee. And the gravel parking lot is something that uh, former Mayor Abramson reminds me. Every time he rides his bicycle in Shawnee Park, he'll stop and he'll send me a picture of the gravel parking lot next to the playground, spray ground area. So these are some recent pictures. Those that use Shawnee Park all the time know the current condition of the lily pond is offering more of uh, old dead cattails, garbage, and leaves. This is, uh, again, the current, I mean, this is current. These were taken on Thanksgiving Day, actually. So part of what we wanted to do was get back in and I know he said, I know Eric said this is, and Ken said this is going to be Metro Parks. Actually, this was one of the projects that Olmstead had identified for a while as something that needed, needed renovation, needed, re, needed restoration. And it was a key component of this project. And so this and the shelter, it really didn't take a, a good picture of the shelter, but this is going to be one of the key areas that we're focusing on, focusing on uh, again, with the Olmstead Conservancy, and this is the ball house, bath house, whatever you want to refer to it as. This has existed probably, I'm guessing, 30 or 40 years since it's really been inhabited. Obviously, uh, you look at it at its deteriorated state. Last year, I did have staff go ahead and take the uh, wooden ramp off of the uh, off of the front. So the, the main part of that uh, bathhouse, I can go back to that, right? Mm -hmm. I think I can go back to it. Yeah. One of the, one of the most important aspects of, the, of this facility is once it's renovated, it's going to be put back into operation. Metro Parks and Recreation's Jefferson Memorial Forest runs a program called ECHO, and that's engaging children in the outdoors. And this is going to be one of the hubs for programming, so this will become active again, actively programmed, which is kind of important uh, to to parks and recreation, and I hope it's important to the community. Obviously, this is uh, the, the the dirt bowl courts, part of the uh, anyone that's played on them. You can see the left one. We did some minor repairs a couple years ago. We renamed it the Cornell Bradley Court. Ben Watkins, Janice Carter, uh, because they're the originators of the dirt bow. But we still have major cracks. You notice there's no scoreboard. And you think about ESPN, the magazine, came to Louisville a couple years ago and did a complete story on inner city basketball. And Louisville was featured prominently as New York, Detroit, Chicago, California, Baltimore, all places that have historical inner city ball. So one of the ideas here is to renovate and rejuvenate these courts, have bleacher seating, have a real scoreboard, and some things that will make us kind of proud that the Dirt Bowl's been in this community for 45, 46 years. So with that, I'll swing it back to Eric. Thank you. Thanks for the promotion. <laughs> you got it, no problem. I look for a check. All right, all right, so this, let's get to uh, what I think is the uh, is the meat of this presentation, and that is construction starts January of 2017. So what should you as, as residents and as a community expect during, during this time? One second. All right. <laughs> All right, so you know, what does this mean when we say construction is going to start? How will it affect, our, affect your day-to-day? -day? Uh, when will it end? You know, these questions, I'm sure, are, are just a few of many questions you can have about that. So I'm going to attempt to respond and act that. So let me answer that. So let me start by sharing with you the hard facts. All right. This, is, this project is primarily uh, a project that occurs in a big hole in the ground. Okay. So unlike many projects that you may see where 
you know, you see a lot of tire cranes and, you know, a lot of people in a lot of area. This really is going to, we're going to basically dig a big hole, a really big hole in the ground. And we're going to make it, we're going to make that hole, the hole's going to be so deep that we will have, we will be able to drive trucks down in it, set up shop down in it, actually work out of that hole. And, uh, uh, and it's going to take a lot of dirt moving in order to create this this project site in the ground all right so you'll you'll see a lot of uh, uh, dump trucks excavation trucks um, you'll see uh, a lot of new people in the neighborhood new workers that are coming in to do the work um, you'll see um, you, there'll be there'll be noise all right and the great thing about this noise is it's noise in a hole in the ground so it may not have the same impact that you would see with projects where uh, everything's above ground. The, um, how will this construction affect the park? Well, we've, the engineers and, constr and contra construction team has worked really hard to minimize that impact. This area of Shawnee Park Loop Road is a, is a side that's parallel to, to Southwestern Parkway. And this is going to be uh, dedicated to construction traffic only. The remaining part of the loop road will be available for patrons. Uh, I think what for some has said is a, is a great idea is that this will become two-way traffic. So you will come in to the park and you're able to go around the park, loop around and come back out of the park, or continue around into the playground area, loop around and come back out of the park. You can continue around and you can take River Road to go out. All right. So right now, if you come into the park, you have to go all the way around the park to get out. Right. All the way through here to get out. So this, we believe, is a little more flexibility during construction. Um, and you still have access to all of the park uh, that is outside of the construction area during this time. Uh, now, when we leave the park, what happens, right? We, we talked about a lot of construction trucks and, um, and vehicles that, that do, to actually do the work in the park. What's going to happen, this is Shawnee Park. This is a residential community. We know that down here is a residential community, okay? And um, when the trucks leave the park, they're going to take Shawnee Parkway, and they'll take it down to get to the industrial zone, and then they'll make their way through the industrial zone over the to um, I-264 so they can go on about doing their business. So, the, you know, so what you're going to find increased traffic will be up and down Southwestern. You won't find that traffic on Broadway or on some of these side streets or on these side streets. We're not allowing that. Our contractors will travel up and down Southwestern. Now, if there are other construction projects that are going on, we won't impact that. And we really, whether that that's Increased traffic, not we won't impact that. Our traffic flow will be right, we would be limited to southwestern, and if there are issues there, you know, we will bring those to my attention. But southwestern is is where the traffic increased traffic will flow. When what's when is all this going to happen? All right. So, January seventeenth, I mean January of two thousand seventeen. We've talked about starting construction, and we basically we start preparing the Shawnee Park site for the construction. And in February, we'll start digging. Um, it, will, it will take from February to August for us to be able to dig the hole, shore it up, which means put it, some restraints on the side so that all the dirt don't fall down on the people working inside the hole. And we will actually start concrete construction of building that basin in August. OK, and we expect between August of 2017, about a little more than a year to December of 2018 in order to have the basin as well as that operations building complete. OK, and fill back in with dirt. So our goal is by 2018 that you be, should be able to stand it at a flagpole and not see the construction. OK, so that you also know um, on December 6th, which is next Tuesday, we will be having a groundbreaking for this project. It will be, it will, uh, it will be set up at the, at the flagpole in that area. Everyone in this room is invited to attend. Um, it's going to be about an hour event, but we would, we would love to see each of you come out for that event. What does an average workday look like, and how would that affect you? 
this project is, if you see, we, if we started in January, we wanted to finish in 2018, December. It's about 24 months. We're really doing about 30 months worth of work in a 24-month period. We have a lot to do uh, on, a, on a very constrained schedule. So generally, construction, you want to start 7 o'clock in the morning and you work till, till, sun, till sundown, all right? So we want to work when it's light. But because of this tight project, don't be surprised if we're working on a Saturday, that we're working till 9 o'clock at night on con during the construction period. Um, if we're working at night, there's going to be lights in the park in order to allow us to see. But remember, these lights will be lighting up a hole in the ground. So it's not like you would find, say, at a baseball stadium or a football stadium at night where you have all the big lights up. We're going to be lighting up an area in the ground. So it won't be as impactful um, as it, you would find in other construction. Um, we have a note here about early morning construction pours, um, the concrete pours. The concrete pours are occurring in August of 2017 is when we believe we start concrete. What that really means to you is that in the morning on your way to work, there's going to be additional traffic on Southwestern Parkway because concrete trucks will be traveling up and down that road helping us with those, those pours. So as you start thinking about your day, um, that in August is where you'll start seeing a lot more heavy traffic in the mornings once we start concrete pours. Now, that was what I consider the hard facts. Now what I'd like to share with you are the fun facts. First, you are not alone, right? I want to recognize um, um, your council person, Sherry Bryant, who's also here, and Myra. Um, they're both, they're both, they're both are here, and I didn't take a moment to recognize you earlier. Thank you for attending tonight. Uh, but there's a stakeholder committee made up of, of residents from the community, your council people, MSD, um, your advocacy group, Olmstead Conservancy, Conservancy, and they're all working together to make sure that the work that we do in the park gets done on time, that the, the way we do that work minimizes the impact on your lives, and, and at the end of the day with the features and the basin, we create more value for, for the residents of Shawnee Park. So this group is working. Uh, we meet, we meet um, every 90 days. We'll be meeting again in January. The things that we talk about tonight, um, the issues that you bring up, the questions that you have will all be presented before the stakeholder group to help make sure that the things we've talked about, the commitments that have been made are met. That, that was a fun fact. Another fun fact, when the construction starts, this area is our fence line. So that's where the construction will occur. We need some area for, lay, for laying down dirt, for contract, for workers to park, to be able to move equipment around in order to do this work. But if you notice, most of the park is still available for use. So if you use the playground area, if you drive and park in, park in different places because you want to enjoy the scenery of Shawnee Park, or you want to attend the juice bowl or attend the dirt bowl, all of those will be available for you. If you want to go and sit at the lovely lily pond, you can still sit at the lovely lily pond. So, uh, so we work really hard to be able to build this basin and, and, um, and not interfere with patrons of the park so that um, you can continue to use the park as you do. That was a fun fact. Another fun fact. There are going to be jobs, all right? We expect that there'll be about 3,900 man hours over the life of this project spent before concrete pours, probably about 50 workers a day on the project. When we start concrete pours, it can and, and get into the really heavy part of the job, which is from maybe August of 2017 till August of 2018. 18. There can be up to 150 people here a day. There's opportunity for people in this community to be able to work on this project. Everybody who want to work on this project will not work on this project. But there's an opportunity for, the, for everyone here if they choose to. Construction is a different kind of um, um, employment. It doesn't fit everybody. The, the Urban League has an, a, 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 uh, what they call a pre-prentice program that they've just started. Uh, pre programs help individuals who haven't been in construction 
to understand construction, to get trained in construction, to be able to do this work. If anyone is interested in that, I urge you to reach out to the Urban League and share your interests. Sometime in the first quarter, we're going to have a job fair. And at this job fair, we're going to bring together the contractors who have the job and need the employers, employees, and individuals who's interested in being in construction. And if you have something like the Urban League pre-apprenticeship program behind you, it really helps. We're going to put the, all these individuals together and see if we can create opportunity. Uh, we'll have that job fair in um, the first quarter. If there's a great interest here, we may do, a, do another one later on in the year. That was a fun fact. Another fun fact, there's going to be opportunity for contracting. So if you're, if you're in the construction or provide services that construction can benefit from, um, there's opportunity here. MSD has set a goal of 15% MBE, 60% women, which means there'll be people of color and, and females, businesses working on this project. There's a goal of, to have 76% of the labor force coming from within this community, and the, this greater community. So that's, 70, that's, seven, that's 76 cents on the dollar. They want to be able to make sure that when that payroll, when payroll is, is total on this project, we spent that with people that live and work in, in, in this greater community. For contractors, uh, we will be bidding out the remainder part of this work in April. And, uh, and sometime in February, we'll have an outreach program to minority and women businesses so that they can get the information that they need to be able to compete and win contracts in this work. And there'll be more information uh, made available about these events as, t as time progresses. All right. Oh, that was a fun fact. <laughs> Another fun fact is the fact that this project, we, the, the Ullman Shooting Construction has set a high goal for themselves. This project is going to be clean. This job is going to be safe. All right. The biggest problem with, because all the work is happening in the park, the biggest place where you would uh, see issues of cleanliness, dust, is going to be from trucks traveling up and down Southwestern Parkway. So some of the things that we've developed in order to minimize dirt and dust along Southwestern Parkway is we've created gravel entrances that keeps them from rolling off mud onto the street. Um, they'll pass through, trucks will pass through a wheel wash as they leave the job. We believe between those two things, that's going to minimize any dirt on the street. We do have constant monitoring of the streets and through that monitoring, when needed, we will uh, we'll, we'll actually sweep the streets. So between those two things, we're going to, they're going to provide the kind of activity necessary to keep your streets clean. The other thing, when your kids use the park, they will be kept safe. Um, there will be notices posted throughout the park of construction zones, hard, air, hard areas, and places that you shouldn't be, as well as there's going to be a perimeter fence. I think we showed that a few back. Yeah, there'll be a perimeter fence following that blue line will be a perimeter fence around the project separating patrons from the park from the construction activity. Right? Uh, we're, we're about to wrap the presentation portion and move into questions and answers. Uh, before I do that, though, if you have written down a question card, could you raise it? Kristen's going to come and pick up the question from you if you have a card with any questions on it. Okay, we'll do it the old school way. We'll raise hands. All right. How are we going to communicate throughout this project? Uh, we've done a few things. Sherry's, Sherry's newsletter is an important part of our strategy. I'm sure everyone here gets it and stays in tune with it. Things that you need to know about this project will be posted in her newsletter. Um, you know, we hope to also put some articles in there about what's happened on the, on the project so you can stay in touch. Um, um, Gail Strange has a radio show. I can't say that everything about the project will be on a radio show, but the most important thing, we will ask her to post those on her radio show. Um, of course, if you're a patron in the park, there will be, again, notices in the park. If there are some things that are changing, we will note that in the park so patrons will know, always know what's safe and what's not safe in the park. But most of all, we have a website, shinyparkbasinproject.org. This is a place where you can get the most up-to-date up news about what's happening in the park. 
All right, so I want everyone to make sure you record that, shawneeparkbasinproject.org. Um, what I have a web, have a clip from the website. This is a um, screenshot of the website. Um, on here, you'll be able to get any kind of upcoming news. Uh, you'll be able to read articles that are there about the project. The idea is to keep you informed about what's going on and what's happening. And if you read something, see something, if you see something just walking past the park and, and you feel like you need to communicate with someone, through the website, you can post any, any concern or issue you have here. Um, we will get it and we will respond to you within a 48 hour period with that, with, with letting you know that we got it and hopefully a response. If we don't have an actual response at that time, we will let you know and we will tell you exactly when we will get a response. Some, some, question you get, some questions that residents ask are hard and we have to figure out the right answer because we don't want to, we want to make sure we answer you adequately each time. All right, yes. Remember one of the early questions people were asking about uh, the construction and were you anticipating rock or dynamite? Or so there's a lot of concern of that to some of the neighbors and people early mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was, a, we don't, all of the test bores that we've done on this project doesn't show that we're going to have any kind of rock issue. It's really a dig job, not a blasting job. So at this point, we don't expect to have any of that occur on this project. Ah, it's always something. Kristen, can you, um, you have that number? We'll make sure we correct that, uh, one on the, on the PowerPoint, and uh, we'll post it here before we, before we, just fix it on the PowerPoint before we get done. All right, thank you. Uh, with that, I'd like to open the floor for questions. Yes, sir. Could you state your name and your address? Yeah. Uh Charles White, I live at 221 North Longworth Avenue, right around the corner. Uh, my concern is, but well, first and foremost, it looks like a nice project, so thank you for pouring some interest and dedication to the neighborhood. Thank you, stay in uh, My concern is more with air quality. Will this do anything to help the air quality around here? Because it's horrific, man. Uh, last year, it used to mainly be on the other side of Broadway by the tracks where the plane is. Strong wind might bring it over this way, but now I actually work from home and go in my basement, man, and it smells like feces. I've spent like maybe over a hundred dollars on chemicals trying to get the smell out of my home. And I was just wondering now with this trying to, you know, direct water to where it's supposed to go and stop backups, will this do anything to help improve the air quality? There there's a I'm gonna to respond to that question and then I'm gonna open the floor. I don't know if that's the question that we want to, that Greg may want to address. Um, but the first question is about the basin. The basin is designed not to smell. We've been involved in three basins, two in Cincinnati, and um, the way basins work basically is that the, um, in doing most times the basin is empty. There's nothing, nothing there, just air. And doing, doing a, a storm, when the basin fills with water, when the water goes into that basin, that trapped air can get displaced and be exhaust during that time. Um, but what happens, when, but after an event occurs and the water that, was, that came into the basin has been pumped to the treatment plant for treatment, the basin is designed with a, with, with a wash, a washing system. And that system wash, washes away any residue that may have, that may have entered the basin with the, with the uh, stormwater, okay? And because that washes it, there's, there's really no material in there to um, degrade in order to create an odor. All right, so basins are designed not to smell. We have two in Cincinnati. Uh, one, well, but neither system has ever caused a problem, both all in residential communities, and neither system has ever had an issue of complaint of smell from the communities. Now, when we design this basin, we are designing this basin with some systems called odor control. It's almost like a fish tank, right? Some carbon, you run the air through the, run the, air through the carbon before, you, before it goes out, it, and, it, and it traps any odor in that carbon. Um, this, this basin is designed to accommodate odor control. If for any reason um, odor becomes any, any kind of an issue, your community has the ability to put, to, to actually install odor control. But I'm, but I'm, yeah, but I'm talking about, the, on, this is really about the basin first. So what would you, and I understand what you're saying, that there's an odor, but what we don't want to do is build the device that adds more odor to the community. You know, and this is, this is really addressing that issue, that this basin is not going to, 
not going to create a worse problem when it comes to odor. It may not solve your problem, and, and Greg can talk directly to that, but as far as making it worse, that's not what this, this, this project does. Um, in Cincinnati, we have uh, two basins there. One basin has odor control uh, devices already in it, and for about seven years, they've never turned it on, not one time. And these are facts that, and that we can, what was it called, that fact, fact proofing? Um, they did do it, fact checking, yeah, you can check that fact. And um, so that's one issue, and the other one doesn't have odor control, and we've never had a problem in, in the community. So I don't expect that you're going to have a problem here with this basin creating current odors. Now, your other question, I'm sorry, your other question, I don't know if you want to address it at all, Greg? As far as, uh, uh, no, no, just, no, okay. We are basically inside of all of the Waterson Expressway is a combined sewer system. This area is also part of that combined sewer system. So what that means is during periods when it's not raining, our sewage flows through that system to the plant. When we get rain, that system is overwhelmed with rainwater and the sewage. It's combined sewage. It's combined with rain, rainwater and raw sewage. Very diluted, but mostly rainwater. In periods of uh, drought, which we have had in the past, when rain is not in that system and it's just the uh, sanitary sewer system functioning that way, odors can escape that system. So this particular design or this particular project is part of our $850 million consent decree to address clean water, uh, water quality in the Ohio River and our streams in this area. So what I would say is that the efforts for this is to keep untreated water from getting to the waters of the U.S. or to the Ohio River in areas of the state. But again, in a combined sewer area, especially when there's an area where we had no rain for a while, we will smell those odors. But again, this project was never designed to address odors in that area. A lot of times what we can do, and, if there's, and we've said this before in public meetings, if we've had a drought and we smell some things, you can call MSD and we can go out and what we can do in these catch basins, they're called trap catch basins, just like a trap in your home in a, under a sink. Uh, we can put some water in there and that keeps some of the sewer gases from escaping the system. It acts as a trap and a barrier for that gas coming out of the sewer system. So I guess the main thing I want to leave behind is that this project is, is not designed to address what already is an odor problem. It doesn't add to it, as Eric said, but it's not really designed to take care of that. But this project won't add to any odor issues that we have. Yes, sir. Another question? Yes. I had a question about uh, I'm John Jones, and I live at 613 Southwestern Parkway, immediately across the street from the project. Light pollution and dust problems are my major concern during the summer. Light pollution in the winter hours. Will the site be lit 24 hours a day? Uh, uh, years ago, when they had ball diamonds over there, they were, you know, ball games that took place late in the evening. They were like, <coughs> But they would like to change off of that project down on the houses along the parkway. That's 24 hours a day or it's going to be cut off at night at, right. in the winter hours or will it remain, you know, on 24 hours. And then during the summer, like we've had a dry period, there will be a considerable amount of dust generated from that project uh, in a, a problematic situation or scenario that would cause a lot of concern for the residents there. We'd have to close windows, you know, park your car inside, do all the things to mitigate it ourselves. Would you all be doing anything to mitigate the dust problems that would be generated from this construction? Absolutely. Um, let me address your first question around um, light pollution. Um, again, this is a, a good example of what um, we're talking about. We're talking about digging a hole in the ground. And our hole will be deeper than it'll be deeper than this hole and be bigger than this hole. But what when we if we're gonna light something, what we're trying to do is light up the hole. Right? Some of the examples you gave are more like lights that are high in the sky, right? The to to light the ground. You know, there's no lights in the park now. Right, right. right. There are street lights, but they're all out. Right. But the problem would be it would have to be nine o'clock tonight, you would have to have lights there for the construction of trucks and people. Right. And here, 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 you know, again, in, your, in this community, 9 o'clock is the cutoff for construction activity, so you're not going to see anything after 9 o'clock. 
Between six and nine, you can see some lights. But the, the majority of it is going to be about lighting the hole, right? And um, so would you see truck headlights, those kind of things, moving back and forth into the park? Absolutely. But only to nine o'clock. Uh, the, uh, the other issue around noise, we're doing something called erosion control. What that's going to do is help keep that dust down, keep, the, keep dust from flying. It's hard for our workers to work in a dusty site, right? So dust hurts our, product, hurts our productivity. Um, again, the work is happening in the hole, all right? It's not above ground like you would find in, in other projects. And uh, we may have some dust to stir up down in the hole, uh, but above ground, ero erosion control techniques, we believe we'll keep that minimized. Again, we got shawneeparkbasinproject.org. Shawnee if you find that you have an issue, we want to call the correct phone number or go to the website and, and bring that to our attention. We will respond to your need, you know, again, within a 48 hour period. And, um, and hopefully we'll have it resolved. If, at least you'll know what the, what, the direct, what the direction we're going to take in order to solve that problem if you're running into a problem. And I suggest when these kinds of issues occur, don't let them lagger. I mean, just, just hop right on it right away, make the phone call, get on the website, but just don't let it linger and, and, and just really fester, become a bigger problem than what it needs to be. So you have a three-year project, you know. Right. So we want to start early. So if you find a problem early, let's start early. So we can make sure that the systems are in place to not, call, to not have that occur. Sir, I can't have a question. My name is Ford Williams. I uh, cover houses in 39 from Miami. And uh, my question is, with the additional construction of traffic, is someone going to be monitoring the quality of the roads and whatnot? It might affect. Are you where, where are you? Uh, as soon as you come off Southwest Parkway, right off. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, you know, we we're, we're in partnership with, um, with with the city with the city of Louisville. Uh, there's no question that the condition of the roads is something that are important to us because, again, the ro go back to the one slide that had the uh, your construction track because his house is, is not here. I don't think so. This one. Yeah. Here you go. So you're saying, are you up here? Where are you up up here? Yeah, like I want to in your area, in your area, there won't be an impact on your road because we're not going to work there. We'll come out the park at Broadway and Southwestern, and we'll continue down Southwestern and go, and get to the highway. So we won't have construction traffic anywhere in this area. It's, everything's going to be restricted to Southwestern Parkway. But even on Southwestern Parkway, the conditions of the roads are important to us. Important to us, and um, and if those roads degrade over the next year and a half. Um, there will be conversations, because it's residents, there will be conversations. Our stakeholder committee that um, has, like, as I said, Sherry and, and other residents on it, will address that to make sure that the community has what it needs to operate. And I'll just add, the project is bonded for such that, so that if issues come up and the roads need to be repaired, there will be resources to fix the roads. Again, if it becomes an issue, don't let it don't let it linger. Bring it up, Shawnee Park Shawnee Park Basin Project org, and um, and the phone number. Let us know. <coughs> yes. My name is Keith Green. I live in 319 Southwestern Parkway. We are about two blocks north of the area. My concern is the beauty of Shawnee Park is going to be disturbed by the loss of trees and other things. But my concern also is for the amount of dirt that you have out of here. What do you do with it? That's a um, very good question. Um, there is about 80 tons, am I right, of dirt? Roughly 200,000 cubic yards coming out of there going all the way over there. It won't be reused in Shawnee Park at all? Uh, well, ha let's tell you, what we do, one of the amenities is to uh, make some improvements in landscaping and, and maybe uh, uh, address some of the um, architectural features of the landscaping uh, in the park. So there, are, there, is, there are conversations that the stakeholder group is having now about what do we do with 
that dirt? How do we help use that in order to make some improvements? Olmstead Conservancy is very involved in about using some of that to help with some of the um, landscaping and the, the um, topographic view of the site. So, um, yes, yeah, there will be some that will be used on the site, but the majority of it is going to be hauled off. Should the residents of the neighborhood be involved in that since they live here? We do have a stakeholder group. That stakeholder group consists of residents from the neighborhood. If this is an issue that you think we need to address, shinyparkbasinproject.org, please put it there. We will bring it to the stakeholders to address an issue. Which, which it sounds like you're saying, should, should, should residents have an opportunity to use the dirt or determine where the dirt goes? Determine how the dirt is used in the zone. Right, that and is a- the stakeholders this, I only saw two names within the neighborhood. Um, the stakeholders, let's see, we have uh, four names on there. They live in the neighborhood. Uh, Cheryl lives in the neighborhood. Myra lives in the neighborhood. Gail lives in the neighborhood. Jan Wydell lives in the neighborhood of 12 people. I, I saw those names, but with all due respect, Councilwoman Hamilton is on the board of the Central Council as a, her assistant. But I'm talking about just everyday people who live in there, have children who play in the they go to the park and things like that. I appreciate what you're saying. So, so you know that we have a stakeholder, we do have stakeholder meetings once a quarter, and we will be having another one in January. The stakeholder meetings will be posted on shinyparkbasinproject.org. Um, they're open to the public. There's a section of that, of that meeting where the public can, can stand and voice any opinions of things that they are work that they believe this group should be working on. So if you do have an opinion that, you're free to come to any stakeholder meeting, voice your opinion. There are residents on the committee and, um, and the public's invited. So if you have a voice to be heard about these kinds of issues, come to the stakeholder meeting and voice your opinion. And, um, and, you know, the stakeholder group will take it, take all of it in council. Any other questions? I'm Carly. I'm hey, 4700 West Broadway. So this is a huge project. So you're going to have some problems. And I'm hearing you say that all we have to do is voice our opinion. At what, at what point does at what point will those opinions be heard? Is it one phone call? Is it 10? Is it 100? How many phone calls does it take to get a problem fixed? OK. If it's a, pro if it's a problem dealing with this project, because not all things are all people. We're not, we can't fix every issue in the Shawnee community. But with relative to this project, if you have an issue or concern, you can call the phone number or Log that concern at shawneeparkbasinproject.org. We will respond to you within 48 hours. So one call. One call. 48 hours we will respond to you, and with that response, we'll either answer your question or tell you here's what we need to do in order to address it, and which means you'll become part of that solution. One phone call. If you don't see that, if you don't see it, if you don't see the response, you don't get the response. Um, I think you voiced that opinion, voiced that problem to Sherry that, hey, I'm making a call to this, I've, I've called this number, or feel free to come to the public, the stakeholder meeting and say it. I'll be at every stakeholder meeting. Eric, you said here, this is all I needed to do. I asked you specifically how many times I need to call. I've called you 10 times and nobody responds. Every time someone calls us or leaves a, or leaves a uh, message on the, on the 800, num on the 844 number, we, rec we make a log of who called, what time they called, and when we respond to it, and what the response was when we do it. So there'll be a log of, of any response uh, and in, uh, that we will make to any call, and to every call or, or communication we get, there's a log on it in order to track it. So I don't expect that you're gonna have that issue. Um, we haven't started the project. Uh, I think you have to just start with believing that what I'm saying is true. Hey, Eric, well, on the, on the website of that, Will the answers to the questions? Yes. Be yes. Be out there for everybody. Any, if you call and you have a question, we will address that question, and that response will be posted on the site. But we're not going to just post it on the site and expect for you to go see it. You call. We're going to call you back. We're going to ask answer your question, um, and then we will post that response on the site so others who want to be able, who may have the same question, have access to it. One, one last thing I want to say, so you, just so you know, um, 
my job as community liaison is, is to respond to these kinds of issues. So this is what I get rated on. For me not to do it, I'm not doing my job. And, um, and that's not gonna happen. So if you have an issue, I, please, shinyparkbasinproject.org, call the 844 number. We will respond to you within 48 hours. And, uh, and then at that point, you'll be in the process to be able to make sure your concerns have been heard. If you feel that you have an issue that's not being addressed, feel free to come to our stakeholder session and voice your opinion. Um, I'm sure there'll be another public meeting you can voice your opinion. Um, but I, so I think there's different, different avenues by which you can be heard and your issue can, your issue can be addressed. Yes. Once again, Q3, 319 Southwest of Parkway. Southwest of Parkway, south of Shiny Park. The street name is in bad shape as it is. Then you put additional trucks on there, it's going to deteriorate even more. Wouldn't it be to the advantage of this construction project to do something about that now? Because it doesn't have to do it in two years. Um, I think um, what we what we wanted what we want to do is work is, is use those roads as they are. Um, if they become if they become an issue because we do we do have a bond on on that on that work, we can address it. I think what John brought up earlier is that um, there is a pathway to be able to solve deteriorating streets as a result of this project. Uh, but to go and pave the road now and then tear the road up and then pave it again um, may not make best use of ratepayer dollars. Because remember, this how this project's paid for is by the rates everybody paid for their sewer bills. So we're trying to be smart with the money and make sure that we uh, use it wisely and in a way that continues to create value for the community. So the plan currently is to use the streets, monitor them if they become a problem, we have a pathway to be able to solve that before the project's, before the project's over. And I'll just add, we, we'll work very hand in hand with Metro. They have their inspectors, they'll videotape, they'll, they'll, they'll do everything for the payment. Trust me, if there's a slightest crack that happens after the fact, they'll contact us. So they'll be their eyes on it too. So there'll be multiple venues of making sure that the road and the asphalt and everything is maintained. And, if something gets damaged, like I said, we have had, we we've done it before and it, it gets fixed. But the good part is that it really wouldn't make sense to go ahead and pave everything nice and fresh now, and then have trucks go over for two years because it'll just it could cause damage. So we'll monitor it and then we'll correct things as need be once the project is near completion. And Keith, Metro Public Works, they have a paving project, and yeah. we've had. We've had them in contact with the MSD engineers as well to talk about the road project. And I think it's one of the things that the stakeholders are going to talk a little yeah, bit about. That's a great question. They, they have like a five year cycle window on how they do the different streets around the county. And they're working with us so that they know not to do anything until we're done. And then they're going to come to the area after the fact to make it all nice and fresh. Can I just say it? You all saw my list that I put out earlier as the budget pass of all the streets that are going to be paid and et cetera. And my question, Parkway, we're on that list. But because of this project, I asked them to hold up on that. You know, they did Broadway, they were part, you know, some of the other streets, but it's kind of like, it's got to get torn up, you know, and I don't be in 20 years trying to get paid. So if we could just kind of let them monitor it, and if it's going to be paid, but I didn't want to put money over there. That's a good point. I forgot about that. Thank you. Additional questions? Sir. Just quick. This is going back to what you were saying. The phone number to call for that smell and the air quality is the same number as the motion no. number? Or? And thank you. When we, I'm John, like with MSD, and I was going to ask everybody in the room. Once we ended, I was going to ask, follow up, everybody in the room to help us out in a favor. If you had any MSD issues, well, if it's odor, whether it's staying in order, anything, please call our customer service number. It's 587-0603. And, and please, it, I'm asking a favor, do that when it happens. Don't smell something and then go to work and come back the next day because it came up in our board meeting just the other day. We are proactively trying to do things to help with the odors and stuff. We are working with our Fish Control District on the odors and stuff. And it really, specifically with odors, 
what's happening right now is is that it's combined system. Every one of those catch basins has a P-trap in it. It hasn't rained. It's dried up, so all the gases. And the simple solution is we bring the water truck out and we'll pour it into the catch basin to fill it back up. We can't do it if we don't know about it. So if you call us, also if you call us when it happens, we can go and find out, hopefully find what is causing the smell and try to fix it as soon as possible. So if you can, if you wouldn't mind, whether it's odor or anything else, as soon as you come up with an issue like that, call that number, and that helps us address some of these issues. <coughs> Is it any more cool that monitors whatever those smells are, if they're toxic or healthy? Or yeah, it's the Air Pollution Control District that does that monitoring. And I, I would just say that unless you are in a there's a lot of technical things, but unless you're in a very confined space and you're really only breathing nothing but that air, that's where it gets into issues. So smelling it in these open situations, it's horrible and nobody wants to smell it, but it's not at levels. Uh, as Eric talked about, it, it's, you know, it's a very, especially when it rains, it's mostly rainwater, so it's a very diluted system. It's just when we have long periods of drought and the rain, it all dries up. So I wouldn't worry about it. But again, if you're slightly worried about it, please call that number and we work hand in hand with air pollution control. When they do come out, they do monitor, they do test, and they can come back and say, oh, it, it may be something. If it's, if it's a septic smell, it's, it's a very bad nuisance, but as far as being a problem, it, it really is. Let me ask you a question. You said you get the smell in your basement? Yes, sir. Do, by chance, because I've got a four drain, I've got a half basement, I've got a four drain, and when it gets really dry, I have, I have to pour. I've done all that. Okay, I just, I, I just know in mind that's what I've had to do. I've got a background in maintenance, so I've, I've done all that. These traps, you can think of it. I'd probably remix some things and try to do it, so I can cover all basements. Well, if you wouldn't mind, you can also help us, give us a phone call, and we'll be. It, it, it helps us come out and try to determine what some of these issues are so we can't fix it's it long term. Hours. Huh? It's 24 hours? Yes, it's 24 7. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> yes, sir. You know, uh, what I want to know is how long, my, my name is Larry Tides, I live in on 47. How long will y'all be around? You know, because, you know, doing a project of this size and that kind of dirt being removed. You know, there's going to be this constant selling of, of, of the basin and you know, dirt, and the dirt's going to be washed away during rain. So how long will y'all be around to ensure that, you know, that doesn't have an impact where it's like water washes up under the road and washes the dirt out from under the roads? Yeah, again, um, the, the uh, construction of the basin starts in August. We expect for the basin to be fully complete in 2000 at the end of 2018, and about six months later, we should have all the project wrapped up. So when the basin's complete, we'll be there for at least another six months, continuing to do some above ground construction to wrap up the project. So there'll be some time there to be able to um, monitor the work. Now, after that, MSD will have that operations building, and they will constantly be there working. They'll have people that are constantly at the park managing that structure, managing that system, monitoring what's happening on, on that system. So as far as how, how long will we be there, once it's in, it's an MSD facility, and they'll always be there. Yeah, yeah my answer would have been forever. Uh, whether it's MSD maintaining it or the Parks Department maintaining it, we're, I mean, the park's not going away, and MSD's not going away, so there'll always be an entity that will be supervising and overseeing the, the area and the facility to make sure that anything <coughs> needs to be corrected will be. And during construction, like we, we, as we said earlier, there'll be erosion control so that the rainwater, remember, you have a hole. So if there's dirt and there, if there's water running, it's probably going to run into the hole, all right, where our guys are working, right? And we'll have pumps there to help control that water. So the water manage is a very important part of being able to do a basin, be able to build a basin in order to keep people safe. And we'll have systems in place, dewatering systems and, up, and erosion control to help us manage that. One, so that the people are safe, but two, that, it's, that all the, everything that's in our construction stays in our construction site. That's a big part of doing a construction project construction project. Everything that happens in your construction project must stay on your construction project. And that's, and that's part of the, um, the um, 
the construction operation that will occur at, at the basin. And I just want to add, the, the dirt earthwork is the first few months of the project. Once we remove the earth and have the whole dug, which is by August of next year, you, there won't be any of that. So it's, it's basically next spring, next early summer, and then it's not the whole entire two years of the project. So that is the big part of, that's why we brought it up, is that that is where the dirt and the big effort of the dirt and the potentials for the mud and all that kind of stuff. There still could be potential, but the big concern is, so don't, don't think there's gonna be that type of earthwork the entire two years. It's that first uh, few months of the construction project. Once once the earth is gone, then like what they talk about, we're going to be building the basin, which is pouring the concrete and bringing in the materials and stuff. But as far as the earth work, that's the very first part of the project. Will this be underground? This, this will be underground. There will, there will be some earth, there will be some will stockpile be on site to bring back. But that in the scale of what is going to be removed is very minimal. Additional questions? Yes. Addition. How tall and how wide is the safety wall that you're talking about? Uh, the fence is eight foot tall. Uh, is it a fence or is that a wall? It's a fence. It's a fence. Are, are you it's, talking are you, about the final wall or? Around the project site? Let's see here. You're talking about on our design. Let's see, we're almost there. Are you thinking here? Okay. Well, how tall is that, Ken? Right now, we don't have a final height for it. What what we have to do is design it so that nobody can climb over it and then fall in. Uh, so so the final height for it will be high enough for safety reasons that nobody can do that. What the actual height is going to be, I think we still need to work that in. And coordinate with Marty and Parks for what that looks like, but definitely so that it's safe. When you say fall in, is this during construction? No, this would be at the after construction is done. That that front face of that building where Eric is pointing, that that's about ten feet down from grade from the the great lawn above it. Right. So that wall up above has to be able to keep people safe from falling. So here you have you on the ground, and as you walk up, the ground continues to go into the face. But you get taller, 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 taller. And so the question is, you know, the, the, the height of this has to be in a way that a person standing here can't fall over. Is that what you're saying, Ken? Yes. Is that correct? That makes sense? And then I, to, to help with that, uh, we have actually tried to combine two things. With this type of a project, there's actually two phases. There's the early work package, which starts moving the dirt. And then that, while they're moving the dirt, that allows us to finish up the design, work with the stakeholders, work with the parks on final things. We plan to come back to show you guys, all right, just how we had before the communication process. This was sort of like to say, it's a part of our dust, you're going to see some earth moving, but we also, early summer, kind of come back and say, okay, here's what some of the final features are going to look like as far as the pavilion. Here's a little bit more detail on the wall you just talked about. <coughs> Maybe even ask some questions of you guys. And this is local day stuff like that. So we're still doing that process. It's just that we wanted to. We were afraid you guys see earth being moved, and then everybody go, oh, there was no input from us because well the design's not done. That's part of the progressive design build. You get a team together that they design it as they go. So we are ready to move the dirt, but we're not ready to design and show the final. We're just the opposite. So we will come back with renderings and a little bit more details and, and part of the stakeholder process talk about <laughs> some of the amenities that are going to come back here. Yes. One of the things Mr. Williams mentioned was about a loss of trees. And I know that was a concern at the previous site where there's going to be a maintenance building. You all have an estimate of how many trees still may or may not be lost. Yes, I don't have the exact number of trees. It's much less than the Great Line. Right. Um, th this is basically the third iteration of where the bay, as everyone, most people know, this is the third iteration of where 
the, the Shawnee Basin is actually going to go, Councilman. So actually there's less trees that are being impacted. And just note that as part of the, really it's a premium landscape package, John Swintowski from our landscape architect who's been involved in the current tree planting along with some of the tree removals as we all know that uh, some of the older trees have seen better days. But moving into the Great Lawn is going to impact less trees. But some of the work that I saw actually today, just some preliminary plans, goes back to some of the actual original tree plantings and species. Like I said, one of the things, uh, he, he talked about oaks and maples. I so said, I think you really need to get with John to talk about specific species of oaks, specific species of the trees. So they'll probably, when it's all said and done, there'll be a positive gain of trees and hopefully in the Great Lawn there'll be some uh, grading that matches some of the original grading design. So some of the, Keith, answer your question, we are looking at ways to keep spoils on site so we don't have as many vehicles carrying soil down the parkway. So those things are all under consideration uh, for sure, okay? Yes. Me or him? Uh, the park improvements that you mentioned, the lily pond, and the, the ball house yes. and all that, are they going to have to wait until the construction uh, or is finished or no, 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 can no, no, the lily no, no, be done? Some no. things be done. Very, very good, very good. Um, I'll take the lily pond first. And we just started, uh, Major, I guess we really just started this week just really talking about the lily pond and, and the orig you know, using the dollars that they originally looked at and the shelter. It's, it's not just the lily pond. You see the, 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 the condition, the, the, yes, the little gazebo by it, all the things there that are associated with the lily pond. That work is not going to wait into 2019. The bathhouse, we're, we're also trying to utilize some of those funds for another grant. So, you know, that building again, I, I can remember as a little kid, I mean, last time I, I can remember being in it as a functioning thing, I was a little kid and it was a recreation. <laughs> I was little at once, Councilwoman. Um, I mean, I grew up, I, I was born on River, River Park Drive. So uh, my family actually grew up, I grew up at Shawnee Golf Course. So that building, the exterior needs plenty of work, interior needs plenty of work, and we're hoping to parlay some of the funds that we have into some other federal grants that will really make the inside of the programmatic side of it very good. The basketball courts, we're hoping that uh, springtime that we're going to be able to get in there. The, the, the money hasn't all been recognized yet, so and as it's tough to get in there this time of year, but we're hoping, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, where did Mrs. Scott go? Uh, we're hoping to work with uh, Joseph and, and their company, and it's something that we've been working with uh, Seal Masters. It's more of a rubberized surface. It's really a high quality. And the basketball courts at the Dirt Bowl are going are gonna to shine. We even started, uh, but we had to pull off down there, like I said, at the original Dirt Bowl, right, right below Flagge High School at the entrance at River Park. We started some uh, repair work, but the weather just didn't cooperate. So hopefully springtime, the basketball uh, courts, hopefully uh, spring, hopefully this winter, it's dry enough that we can do some work on the baseball field as part of the project. And Major, do you have any rough idea how long the lily pond project could take it's just too early on that so but that work will not have to wait until uh this project it, it, it can be going on simultaneous okay yes the amphitheater is different fundings and different monies to be looked at okay it's, it is it is definitely in our deferred maintenance uh plan of, of action. Does that mean I'm going to get a hug from you, Meyer, before the day is out? Doesn't look like it. I was close. Maybe when it's done. I was close. I was so close. Thanks. I never heard the flagpole refer to as Duffy 
pretty old. <laughs> you know, uh, but it would be nice to have a flag there. It would be nice to get that flagpole when this project is complete to have a, a light and a new flagpole at, at, at Duffy. Thank you. Thank you, John. That's okay. I'll do that. John from MSD said that that will be taken care of. It will be up. It will be up. Up lit too. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. You can put a Duffy sign. A little plaque. Are we getting close? Any additional questions? Well, um, this concludes our, our public meeting. I want to thank again, thank each of you for taking time out of your busy evening to join us and ask some great questions. Again, I, I suggest you go to ShawneeParkBasinProject.com with any concerns. Uh, you don't have to just be concerned. If you want to go and say how great we were tonight and how informative this meeting was, you can do that too at shinyparkbasinproject.org. So thank you very much. <laughs>